Welcome back for part two of our Node.js and MongoDB with the Ubuntu environment tutorial. Uh, we're going to go ahead and update our NPM package manager for Node.js. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and at the root level install NPM install express with the global environment. That's going to need root access. so. And what that will do is it's going to help us create a boilerplate for us to work off of real quick and hopefully get this done within 15 minutes. So first off we're going to do express and we're going to call our app mongo node app and then we're going to go ahead, we're not going to test it out, we're just going to go straight into programming and adding our module to it. Um, first off, actually, here before we get going, let's cd into Mongo node app, and we're going to create a directory called lib. And that's where we're going to store the modules we make to connect to our database. And let's go ahead and make a file in there from right off. Uh, we call it Mongo node app and lib. We're going to call this names.js all of our modules are JS files and from there let's actually open up a couple files as well let's open up our app and package and let's also open this up while we're at it our views because these are the three files we'll be editing and this is the file that we're adding we want to delete a couple things from our app server file and we will not need the user route or call function and in our package let's go ahead and edit that first we're gonna call our app mongo node app just like we did before one word not multiple everything else is fine as it is we're gonna say we want the latest module and we also want to add in our mongoose module. Mongoose helps us connect to the node database. Uh, makes things a lot easier for programming. And if you need to learn more about that, mongoosejs.org. All right, and that's all we need to do there. So let's go ahead and start creating our name module and we're going to go ahead and call that mongoose module we just made sure our dependencies had and we'll call it mongoose and we're going to equal require and we're going to create another variable called schema and we're going to call upon the mongoose and schema create a name schema and that's going to equal a new schema and we're just going to add one value name this is our line entry into our table let's create a couple parameters for it uh, so that way it has some rules and you could simply just type string here but we want to add a little bit more so we're going to go type string uh, unique meaning we only want one name to exist uh, hopefully more people don't have the same name and require it because we need to at least have one value and that's good for that uh, now we're going to assign our name schema to a table and we'll go name model getting the variable equals mongoose dot model and this is very simple we're gonna create one called names and from there we will add in our name assign our name schema to it And 
from here we can go ahead and start creating some functions right uh, we want to actually pass a callback function to this one and we will we'll call this our open connection um, so actually no callback for this one we don't need to pass anything uh, we will create another one though which we'll call get names and we will pass a callback function to this one um, let's go ahead and create a exported function for get names we will call this we start off by module dot export the name that we want to give the exported function we will call this get list and we will pass a callback function to this um, and then from there let's go ahead and open it and let's go ahead and write that open function real quick so mongoose dot connect and we want to go ahead and tell it where it's connecting we're going to be connecting to our local host Mongo server, so MongoDB, kind of like HTTP, local host, and we will call this the names, and that's it. All right, um, we don't need to do anything else there. Now let's go ahead, and we will get names now that we're connected and we will pass a callback function to it and we will be getting back a error response and a name response in that order um, if I'm correct yes error and name Uh, we do know that after we've made it this far, we don't need to be connected anymore, so mongoose.disconnect. I don't like leaving my connections open. Some people do. I find you're probably ordering your, you're probably looking for more trouble than anything. So if we do get an error response, let's handle that. Else, nothing essentially so callback and or actually callback will be we'll do it in this order we'll pass similarly our error response and then our because we have an error we won't pass back any name list and that's it else we will pass Back our callback function to our get re response, and it will be null and our names list. And that is it. We don't need to do anything else there. Um, we do need to go ahead and create that connection, though, or bind to that connection and find any names in there. So we go our db equals mongoose connection with the db we're only going to look through it once and we're going to open everything and look for our model. So anywhere where our name's model exists, let's find it. Now inside here, I like to pass an empty JSON-like parameter, um, just one option you have, and we'll bind all that to our callback. All right. And we want to do one more module, 
and this module will be called module.exports and add name because we want to be able to add names to everything and from here we will be passing a callback function so that we know if we have an error open our connection again and then we will be doing um, we only need to create a variable to pass in our name actually so equals new um, name model and we'll be binding our pass back name oh you know I need to pass we need to pass a name in here obviously or else we're not adding anything so name and pass in the value of name and simply to save it we just go name dot save and we will handle any errors so if error else nothing so call back and we will pass the error response if we don't get an error response we'll pass back a empty callback nothing to report everything went well and that should be it hopefully I didn't mess up anywhere let's go ahead and move oh move on back to our app file and from here we're gonna edit our get and we will put in a function with a re request and a response handler and uh, let's go ahead and call in that module we just created and we'll call it name equals require Uh, you have to add in the dot to look into your root directory of your application. If you don't, you'll be looking into the root directory of your system names and JS. You don't need to add the JS, I'd like to though. Make sure it's going to the right place. And from there, we're going to call that and we are going to get list in our get list we did a couple things so we want to actually get back our error response and our names list yes it's a callback function so we want to treat it as so so if error And I am running out of time. I think we're going to have to finish off in another tutorial here. So I will be back. Um, let's go ahead and just finish this off real quick. So if error and then else otherwise. I'll be right back. See you in the next video.